All right, let's talk about lathe for just a second, specifically interference detection with the holder and the part. Um, when you're doing OD turning, roughing on simple parts, it's really simple to do, right? We usually just use an outline and that's gonna take care of everything we need to do. We don't have to worry about interference, but who's just turning down shafts? Who's making simple parts these days? It seems like everything has really deep grooves or something like that. And so 2D tooling, although usually applicable, is just not going to help with things like grooves where you've got these weird shaped uh, tools that specifically are designed to create certain types of features. And it's not enough to just simply hope that they're not going to be any interference. We need to build three-dimensional tooling for our lathes. And that was introduced last year. Uh, and we've seen some major improvements this year with the 3D tooling. So let's kind of go through and see how those are created, but also some of the improvements to how they're managed this year. So I've got a, uh, a, a tool path, or a couple tool paths put on this part. And if we back plot it real quick or, or simulate it real quick, you can see that obviously the, the roughing and the major material removal, that's all easy to do but it's this groove that I've got a problem with. This groove has a deep grooving area and I'm getting interference, or at least it looks like I'm getting interference uh, on the holder on this flange. Now, I don't know if that's real or not because the part, the, th the holder really doesn't have the detail in it that the actual holder is gonna have. So I'm gonna go download and pull in the more accurate uh, shape of the tool that I actually am gonna use. And I'll take you through and show you how that's done. So there's my library of parts on this tool path and I don't see the one I want. So I'm gonna right click and simply say, create 3D tool. Um, you can do this from the tool manager or from just kind of on the fly when you need it. So we'll give this one a name. I'm gonna call this uh, my groove with relief because it's my grooving tool that has that relief cut. It's an external grooving tool, set up my cutting side, my tool number, my offsets. And the nice thing about setting this information here is that when it goes into the library, it's gonna be indexed and searchable. This tool needs an insert. Now, if I had an insert in the library, I could go grab it, but I'm gonna create a new one, call it groove insert and I've got a step file that I downloaded from the manufacturer for the insert. Brings it on in. Um, all I have to do is kind of give it some information about uh, what kind of insert it is, specify the corner radius on it, and everything looks pretty good. Now this insert then becomes sort of available to use elsewhere if needed. The holder can also be added. I'm gonna set this one up as my groove holder and specifically go grab another step file. Now this, this happens to be one that was created uh, from the same vendor. Uh, so they came in together really nicely, which is convenient, but they don't have to. Specify the machine connection face, and that's that back face so that uh, it can grab either the tool holder or just be, be loaded up into the machine. Now from here, because these came in at the same time or from the same model, they were already positioned, but this dialog has a, a mating area where it gives you the things that you're most likely to need to do next in the order you're likely to do them. Uh, by the way, the dynamic transform now has a stop on contact feature. And what that allows you to do is if you don't have faces that mate uniformly or that, that get you just exactly the way you want it to be done, uh, to be located, you can just start dragging it in a certain direction or rotating it in a certain direction. And when it hits, it'll actually stop which is how you're going to do it in the real world. You're going to slide it up till it stops, and then you're going to tighten it down. We'll keep on going, and the next thing we need to do is set up the cutting plane. Now, by setting the cutting plane, it's going to determine where it's going to make contact with the part, and then it's going to do a nice outline of the uh, insert and the tool, and that's kind of do the cutting. Now, you're still going to get the interference detection from the 3D model, but the cutting is actually going to be done from that, that cutting plane outline there. A couple more things I need to do uh, on the turret. I got to set the, uh, the, the turret location. So let's do that. Yeah, so we got vertical or horizontal mounting, top or bottom turret, counterclockwise or clockwise, left or right spindle. Um, 
and just kind of give it all the information you need. The, the tool offset, the, the cutter compensation, should automatically be picked up. It's going to be automatically created and, and calculated based on the geometry that you have, but it can be modified if you need it. So there's my tool. We'll grab that and let's go ahead and just kind of uh, re-simulate and then we'll backplot this tool to see how we did. So with the simulation, you're going to see that uh, obviously it's, it's uh, going to be using the new 3D tooling and then we'll get full simulation of that relief to see if that relief shape is going to work for this particular part OD and this groove diameter. And when you look at it from the side, you kind of see that it doesn't quite match the, the cur curvature, so it's kind of designed for a different OD of part, but it's totally going to work. It's going to clear without any problems. Um, if you're just doing lathe and you don't have the uh, verify, you can still see this in the back plot too. Uh, it's still very easy to confirm that there's not going to be any interference, and you can click on the toolpath to get it right where you want to be so you can see it. Uh, the tooling improvements also apply to kind of mixing and matching or finding tools for what you need. So there's a nice tool manager where you can go in and modify that tool as needed. So the tools in, in uh, 2019, the tools were kind of a, a group. It had to be the same group every time. If you wanted to mix and match, you had to create a new group. Well, now we have inserts and holders and filters for both that are, that are specific to that type of tool so that you can go and search your library of inserts and holders find the one you need and apply it to the tool you've got. So you can see I've got my library in multiple tabs and multiple sets of filters. Make it much easier to work with uh, this complicated 3D tooling for lathe. So that tool manager is built in. You can uh, modify that up front or you can kind of build it on the fly uh, if you need a tool for a tool path. Um, the filters and the inserts the filters and the, the, the libraries for holders and inserts can be filtered by uh, radius, by, by direction, by type. Uh, it's, a much, it's a very powerful tool, library tool, to keep everything organized. And with those 3D toolings, you can actually look at the full relief all the way around the tool and the insert to make sure it's going to work. That automatic tip compensation is built in now. So when you specify how you want, or the, the geometry, the 3D geometry of the cutter, it's gonna take care of the tip compensation for you. <laughs>